was my son. He was a little sweet kid, innocent. It was mistaken identity. It was supposed to be him. My son is his age. I think about my son. And it was evil against good. It was evil against an angel. He was a good kid. Everybody loved him. We'll be praying for his soul. Thank you for joining us for this PIX11 News special, Justice for Junior, the murder of a Bronx teen. I'm Tamson Fidel. I'm John Muller. As we remember Lissandro Junior Guzman Feliz, we also want to help New Yorkers heal from the tragedy that has deeply impacted our city. Yeah, tonight how parents can protect their kids from getting caught up in the gang life and what communities can also do to take control of their streets. On Wednesday, Junior's grieving parents did something no parent should ever have to do. They buried their teenage son. But they're not alone in their suffering. Yeah, that's right. The Bronx community, New York City, and people all across this country are mourning the death of this bright young man. His life was cut short Wednesday, June 20th. Lissandro Jr. Guzman Felice was walking to this Bronx bodega on East 183rd Street. Investigators say he spotted three cars filled with at least nine men. Feeling nervous, he ran into the bodega for help. So I tried to hold him. I don't know what's going on. And when he told me he's looking for me, they looking for me or they running for me. So I, I helped him bring it down, but he was so scared. I, I remember his face. He was so scared and I tried to hold it down and he jumped up. The other people that coming for him, they saw him, he was already there. And I, I... Junior was dragged outside and savagely attacked with knives and a machete. It was a case of mistaken identity. They thought he was a rival gang member, but Junior was an innocent kid with no gang affiliation. Frightened and bleeding, Junior ran back into the bodega, but it was taking too long for help to arrive. A worker says he pointed to the door, saying the hospital was only a block away. In his final act of desperation to stay alive, Junior staggered to the hospital, but it was too late. He collapsed on the sidewalk. On Friday, June 22nd, a memorial began growing outside the bodega. Tributes poured into social media, including this one from Bronx rapper Cardi B, who posted a picture of Junior's mother crying on his lifeless body. She created the hashtag Justice for Junior. Sunday, June 24th, a break in the case. The NYPD makes the first arrest. In Patterson, New Jersey, six more men are arrested. And Tuesday, June 26th, an eighth arrest. Wednesday, June 27th, hundreds say a final farewell to Junior. In a New York City courtroom, the suspects make their first appearance. He has what appears to be a machete in his hand and he strikes uh, in the direction of the deceased. They all pleaded not guilty. Well, the Trinitario gang has been on the radar of police for decades now, and right now there are more than a thousand active members on the streets of New York City. Yeah, unlike MS-13, which has been in the public spotlight of late, the Trinitarios flaunt themselves on social media. They use Facebook and Instagram to recruit, hunt, and kill. Tonight we have an inside look at this violent gang. Junior's case has exposed the injustice and how the severe this gang is. It's like the Latin King from back in the days, but the problem is they're even more vicious. They don't care walking down the street, chopping you up. Private investigator Manuel Gomez has been tracking the Trinitarios gang since 2014. So when he got a call from an eyewitness to Junior's attack and saw the video, he immediately knew who was behind it. The motto of the Trinitarios is a gun runs out of bullets, but a machete never does. Many worked on two separate cases involving similar machete attacks as far back as 2012. In both cases, a group of machete wielding attackers chased down their victim like prey. They'll come in a group of between 10 or 20 of them, and then they stab you with kitchen knives and machetes, as you saw in Junior's case. An estimated 400 Trinitarios gang members terrorized neighborhoods in Brooklyn and the Bronx, forcing people in the neighborhoods to turn a blind eye to their crimes. We have a very serious cancer that needs to be cut out, and I hope to God that Junior's death won't be in vain. 
Well, in a short life of just 15 years, Junior made a lasting impact on his Bronx community. He had big dreams to become a police officer when he grew up. Yeah, to his mother, Junior was her baby boy, her best friend. To this community, though, he was a brother. Pix 11 James Ford has more on the legacy he leaves behind. The woman who held him as a child and held him on his deathbed can best say who Lissandro Guzman Feliz, or Junior, was. My son was a little child, a little kid, 15 years old. He just started to live his life. He was, he, he was a sweet child. He never had been have into in any fight in between his short life. His dream was to be a detective. Since five years old, he liked to play with a police car, and he said to me, Mommy, I want to be a police. He told me it was just basically that he, that he wanted to get back to the community. He wanted to save people, so that was his desire to become a cop. John Grace was Junior's advisor, commander, and good friend in the Explorers, an NYPD group for teens and young adults interested in becoming law enforcement officers. He was like a little brother to me, basically. He was always happy. So if anybody can remember him, it's remember him by his smile. That's the one thing that would cheer you up every day. His memory still makes an impact with tributes pouring in. A huge electronic billboard calling for justice for Junior is set up next to one of the country's busiest highways, the Bruckner Expressway. And on Thursday, Junior, as he was known to his family and friends, was loved by many. The New York Yankees, Junior's favorite sports team, paid tribute to him at the stadium, and a whole community showed its love with not one but two enormous candlelight memorials. Mourners lined up block after block for two days to attend Junior's wake. They packed his funeral inside the church and out. Junior's family has been left with tremendous showings of support and love, but also without their beloved son. They did not kill only my son. They killed me too. I'm dead, but I'm, I'm alive, but I'm dead. I don't feel the color and the taste of the life now. For me, the life is no happy. But she laid her son to rest the way he wanted to be in life. He was buried wearing a Yankees jersey and his police explorer's jacket. I want to be a police. That's why he willing to be. That was his dream. Well, the love for Junior can be felt all across the city. This is a live look at the memorial outside the bodega. It has literally taken over the entire block there. And people who have never had never met him are stopping by to pay tribute to the 15 year old. Yeah, two blocks away, another memorial is going up. An artist painting this Stand with Junior mural. The artist says it is a call to action. He wants to give everyone access to Junior's memory. We represent him ascending and you get to take a picture with that and stand with him. So it's it's stand it's the literal version of stand with Junior. This is something that we want to build for the everybody was affected, everyone is welcome to come, take a picture with it, leave a mural, leave a candle. It's just something that we just want to open up for everyone. It is just one of the many tributes to the fallen teen. This tragedy has also struck a chord with celebrities who've shown an outpouring of love and support to the family. It started with this heartbreaking image from Cardi B. Yeah, J-Lo posted a video of Junior's funeral showing the pallbearers wearing Yankee jerseys carrying the teen's coffin. And rapper Dave East, NBA superstar Carmelo Anthony and his wife Lala Anthony made personal visits to the family's home to express their condolences. They gave the mother two Knicks jerseys and a pair of signed basketball shoes. Rihanna shared this message on Instagram. Can't stop thinking about this poor baby boy and how his family must feel right now. Hashtag justice for Junior. A grieving mother speaks out. He was my son, my friend, my little baby. He was my all for me. Plus, taking back the streets. As a community, we can stop Yo, the violence. We can stop it. It can happen and it will happen. As a parent, it hurts me. It, it kills me since past Wednesday. I can't even sleep. I worry, thinking, looking at my son. Well, this really is a story that has touched parents all across the country. Mothers thinking it could have been their son. Junior's mother says when her son was killed, a piece of her heart died with him. 
Yeah, the memories, she says, though, will stay with her forever. Here is PIX11's Ayanna Harry. How does a mother move on after the murder of her baby boy? I won't gonna have him never, ever again. You know, I feel like death in life. Leandro Feliz wasn't ready to say goodbye. He was your friend. He was my son, my friend, my little baby. Today we spoke with Junior Guzman Feliz's mother one on one outside her home in the Bronx. Yeah, I wish I would have met Junior. He seemed oh my God. like he was such a good friend. You will love him. She shared the one thing she'll miss the most about her boy. He never leave me alone. We all the time we're all together. Everywhere, everywhere, me and him. That bond was broken in an unthinkable way. The night of June 20th, Leandro got the call and ran to the hospital. The wounds were too deep. He lost too much blood. Junior didn't make it. Too much. It's too bad. Too bad. Then his mom saw the chilling images over and over on social media. Her son dragged on the floor, desperately trying to hold on to that doorway. He knew what was coming. No mother wants to lose a child like this. I don't have a description to express how I'm feeling. It was such a dark time. Leandro lives steps away from the store where Junior was killed. The grim reminder, now filled with flowers, candles, and love. That support is making me feel much better. Monday, Leandra bravely walked into her son's wake. She was surrounded by thousands. I want to say thank you very much for all the support. Then it was time to bury Junior. <laughs> but what this mom will remember the most are all the things her son loved to do. PlayStation, basketball, Oh, uh, Yankees, everything. He was very funny. I am missing. When you join a gang, you're risking your life. Next, protecting kids from the gangs. I'll never join a gang ever in my life. And one man comes out of the darkness. I got tattoos and bullet wounds and scars to show it. Armed with a new perspective. That if we can give them the outlet, if we can give them the outlet, they won't be out there doing that for no reason. You're gonna get caught up with the wrong people and the wrong things at the wrong time, and it's gonna, everybody get a wake up call from Junior. Is Junior the wake up call that the city needs? The 15 year old was not in any gang, but he still became a victim of violence. Yeah, for some city kids, joining a gang seems like the only option, but in some cases, it is not even a choice. Pix Levin's Nicole Johnson explains tonight. I'll never join a gang ever in my life. To be honest with you, I don't like to talk about that. Okay, right. I understand. You can't, it's really hard talking about gangs. Yeah, very hard, especially what they did to Junior. Not joining a gang as a young teenager growing up in the city may be easier said than done. In some cases, the pressure is overwhelming and it's hard to just walk away. Many gangs live and die by violence. It's crazy. Every time I walk around, I got to look behind my back just, just to be secure. You feel what I'm trying to say? Like, it's just, that's like... That's pointless, like, I don't even want to... Uh. These young men are very emotional as they tell us about the tough choices they face every day with gang life playing out right before their eyes, including the murder of Junior Guzman Feliz at the hands of the Trinitarios gang. It hurts, you know, it hurts me a lot because I grew up, you know, in the streets and living in the streets out here is not really safe and I'm just really hurt. With so much pain, bloodshed, and innocent life taken, PIX11 turned to a gang member to help us understand. We are concealing his identity. Why is joining a gang so attractive to some young people? Gang culture is appealing because they're the ones that are winning out here. Nobody wants to be on the losing side, you know, and they offer protection. They offer a sense of security for those kids that don't have that and not getting that at home. It's a feeling of belonging, you know. Nobody wants to be a victim out here, and it seems like the gangs are victimizing everybody. The NYPD says gang-related killings are down to 79 in 2016, from 129 deaths the year before. 
Those numbers continue to go down, but police can't always know when gangs will strike or keep track of all gang activity. In Junior's case, it all started when he was mistaken for a rival gang member. It's about the reputation, you know, gangs have a reputation to uphold. It's very hard. Because you're going to get caught up with the wrong people and the wrong things at the wrong time. I feel like, you know, since they're growing up to a new generation, they just want to do, you know, they just want to grow up so fast. And they've seen things from other people and they just want to follow their footsteps. Is there pressure to join a gang? Like, when you join a gang, you have to live for what the outcome of it. Like, when you join a gang, you're risking your life. Police also say that risk is one too many are willing to take. Well, when kids get trapped in the gang life, it does not have to be a permanent prison. There is hope for the future. Yeah, one man who did time for his life of crime is armed with a new perspective, and he's now spending time on the streets, steering kids away from that dark path. Pix 11's Jay Dow has his story. In a Bronx basement, a handful of young black and brown boys take a moment to appreciate their work. This is the beat we was working on before. Music they created with the help of a mentor who knows all too well the temptation of hitting the pause button on clean fun in favor of gun and knife play on the streets. I think, I think it's disgusting that they did that young boy like that. That boy is 15-year-old Lissandro Jr. Guzman Feliz. 29-year-old Bronx resident Malik Salahuddin says he mourns the talented teen who was brutally stabbed and murdered on a street corner not far from here. I think they have no outlet. Malik spent five long years in prison on a violent crime conviction. I got tattoos and bullet wounds and scars to show it. But now, armed with a fresh perspective, he's the assistant director of a nonprofit, University of the Streets. What's good, man? Where he works daily to keep boys in the neighborhood from turning into something much worse. So whatever they're into nowadays, I try to find a way to make their dreams reality. If they say they're into video editing, I try to get them a video editing program. Against the backdrop of a senseless act of violence, a sobering realization is taking root on these Bronx streets. We have to make sure our neighborhoods are safe and secure and that our children have options, options for goodness. And Junior was an example of that. He just happened to be in the wrong place. Community leaders and elected officials alike say what's required now is a moment of honesty and a look within. It's not something new, but what happened here with Lisandro Junior should be the tipping point. Roxborough President Ruben Diaz Jr. insists the battle for young lives out on the streets cannot be fought alone. We're creating jobs, we're, we're uh, funding schools and, and technology, and we're creating opportunities. But my response is, what are you doing to help me? So what we're lacking is a level of, uh, of, of involvement. Participation and involvement from whom? From men in our communities, from, the, 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 from parents. The reality, a healthy home life is not always possible. And that's where positive community influencers like Malik Salahuddin do what they can to prevent a young boy from turning into the kind of monster willing to rob another junior of his life and future. What is your hope for them? My hope for them? It's a little deeper than hope. Hope is like wishing on a star. I believe and I'm positive that if we can give them the outlet if we can give them the outlet, they won't be out there doing that for no reason. A gang life is full of evil and darkness and destruction, and we have to make sure our kids stay out of that. Next, help for parents and keeping your family out of the darkness. We thank you for watching this PIX11 News special, Justice for Junior, the murder of a Bronx teen. If you're concerned about a family member going down the dark path of a gang, or if you're looking for help to end gang violence in your community, go to PIX11.com slash junior. While there, you will also find all of our coverage of Justice for Junior. It will be updated as new information comes in. And a reminder that Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church will be holding a prayer vigil Sunday in honor of Junior. They're also going to look at gang violence, how to stop young people from joining and get current gang members to quit. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Tamson Fidel. I'm John Muller. Good night.